To thee we come, O Lord, our God. examination of conscience. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me, all you that yearn for me, and be filled with my fruits. You will remember me as sweeter than honey, better to have than the honeycomb. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to whom God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, this is your celebration, prepared at your Son's command. Empower us to approach your altar worthily, and feed us with the bread of life and the cup of gladness. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. On this, the 19th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree, but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank, then strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. This is the word of the Lord. The Graduate. Happy the man who meditates on wisdom and reflects on knowledge. The second reading as prescribed by the church this day is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice, and be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us, as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. To the victor I shall give some of the hidden manna. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. 
Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Venture for Philonius Christus. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Taken from today's reading of Paul to the Ephesians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. One of the most powerful of all the teachings of Jesus is found in the story of the parable of the Pharisee and the publican, who, as Jesus said, they both went up to the temple to pray. We find this parable only in the Gospel of Luke. And it goes something like this. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself and said, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not even lift up as much of, of his eyes unto heaven, but struck his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house, justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. You know how easy it is, even among Christian believers, to compare their, themselves with others. This problem exists in our world and in our great nation. This problem is as old as time. We find this in the conflict between Cain and Abel, brothers and the sons of Abraham. Out of pride and jealousy, Cain commits the first recorded murder. St. Paul, in his establishing of Christian churches, found the same anger 
pride and jealousy and in fighting which as St. Paul speaks in his letter to the Ephesians today grieves the Holy Spirit he goes on to say that all those who are baptized in the church of Christ are sealed for the day of redemption he's speaking about us Paul goes on to preach that we were all bought for a price. It was through the sacrifice of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, who paid for our own salvation. I believe that when we come to this holy place to offer prayer and participate in the eternal memorial of Christ, who offered up his body in the shedding of his blood for all speaks of this redemption. This becomes apparent in the words spoken at the consecration of the bread and wine. Jesus at the Last Supper is recorded to have said, take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood. And he also says that his body and his blood was to be a lasting memorial and also reminds us that as often as you have done this, you do it in memory of me. And Christ, who offers himself as a pure and perfect oblation and sacrifice, was for the remission of sins, your sins my sins. You know, I've said several times during sermon, a quoting a scripture passage of Jesus where he says, wherever two or three are gathered, I will be among them. He comes to us. He comes to you. He comes to me. This morning, bringing and sharing his message of peace, joy, love, and forgiveness. As many of you know, Wayne, you know, because you're here every day, I strive to celebrate, and we strive to celebrate Holy Mass. And pr prior to Holy Mass, we read from the Liturgy of the Hours. It's a breviary of devotion in which we recite psalms, scripture readings, and offering of prayer. But Holy Mass is so much more. Whenever we gather in his name, we are presenting ourselves to him who bought our salvation for a price. As a sinner, whenever I celebrate Holy Mass, I recall that gift that he gave to me and that he gives to us. And I recall the love that he has for me and for all mankind. And I pray during Holy Mass for forgiveness of any wrong I may have committed. You know, and when we've talked about it, whenever we celebrate Holy Mass, we feel as though we have been strengthened by the Word. And it prepares us for the day ahead. I pray that as I approach the altar of God to celebrate Holy Mass, may be less than the Pharisee and more like the publican who in his humility would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but rather struck his breast saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. My brothers and sisters, in the letters to the various Christian churches that Paul established, 
We hear from Paul about living a life worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus offered. In today's letter, he reminds the congregation at Ephesus, one of the largest cities of the known world at that time, the basics of morality that sets Christians apart. May we reflect on these words and take it to heart. Brothers and sisters, all bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in thankful anticipation, we place our gifts upon your altar. Fill them with the blessings of heaven so that our sacrifice may bring us closer to our salvation. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is worthy and praise. Father of powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. And empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our him a praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna not in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna not in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world, with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our proud bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles, Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who suffer from the coronavirus, and pray not only for them, but also for their families. Let us give God our thanks for the blessings of the doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. Let us remember in our deepest prayers and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces and pray that God would watch over them and return them safely to their families. And let us pray for one another, and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others in memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family 
And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that sole moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the mind in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
brothers and sisters, prior to the receiving of Holy Communion, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and I unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> may we receive mentally, and may this temporal gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, and whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Come, eat of my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live, 
advance in the way of understanding. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, as we have shared in the sacred banquet, so may we anticipate entering the eternal kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the life of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. As we gather at the table of the Lord, I do bring to mind that following Holy Mass, there will be a very brief meeting of those who are part of the parish committee. Um, I do bring to mind that we have envelopes for the packets of information for the upcoming barbecue. Um, also in the back of the church in the vestibule, there are posters that are currently being distributed, and if you can, please take one or two of them with you, and wherever you do business, if you can, please share um, information about our barbecue. Uh, is there any other announcements to be made today? With none being said, the, um, after, after the um, Holy Communion, I know that Barbara had played instrumentally um, the second communion hymn, and I think it kind of ties into the sermon that I offer today. Please take these four lines of, of stanza um, and what it really means as we talk about coming to the altar of God. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Let us conclude this morning with the offering of prayer for the intentions that were mentioned during the canon of the Mass, 
as well as for our own intentions. And also, let us conclude with the offering of prayer for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones. May God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, we gave all the